Okay, I'm going to demonstrate this Tektronix 2465A oscilloscope to you today. Uh, I bought it several years ago to use on a particular project uh, and uh, I've now uh, got too many scopes and this one's got to go because I don't have room. I'm just going to go through and demonstrate that it works as it should. We'll start by switching it on. I power up like that. Um, comes up and uh, it uh, passes its self-test, or at least it should do, there we go. No errors there, it's all happy, I think the non-volatile memory is okay. I'll just show that each of the four channels works the way it should. I've got a signal generator here with a one kilohertz sine wave on it. Uh, let me display that nicely. Uh, we've got uh, channel one, attenuator does what we'd expect. Uh, trace disappears because it's too big sometimes. And we'll show channel two, uh, same thing, move it into view, attenuator works, as you'd expect. Channel three and four don't have such comprehensive attenuator settings, but they do work. Here we go, look, that's channel three. It's got two settings, one volt, 0.1 volts per centimeter and 0.5 volts per centimeter. Channel four, Likewise, just the same, works fine. Um, the, we'll go back to channel one, just for simplicity. Uh, there's uh, it displaying sine wave at, at one kilohertz. Uh, I'll just show that the cursor measurements work the way they should do. We could do you know, voltage measurement, peak to peak on here. If I move the, oh, the top, oh, hang on, it's too big, isn't it? Uh, Move that to line up the bottom of the waveform and that's the top. You can see that the amplitude is 2.06 volts peak to peak. I think the signal generator is set to uh, uh, one volt um, uh, uh, peak output. It's not terminated, so it's a bit bigger than it should be. But anyway, the cursor measurements do what they should do. Uh, time measurements, we've changed to time mode. Let's measure the frequency of this, measure its cro where it crosses the axis. Two places, lo and behold, there we go. It's very hard to see on the screen, but that's a thousand microseconds. And switch it to frequency mode, there you go, one kilohertz. Um, cursor measurements work fine. And uh, now if we go and demonstrate the delayed time bases, if I put a slightly more interesting waveform on, like a uh, triangle wave, there we go. There's our triangle and we can pull out the time base knob and uh, we have two time bases to play with so I can first of all move the highlight to where I'm interested in perhaps that point on the waveform there and if I push the knob in again uh, oops there we go oh we, we're selecting the speed of the second time base now there we go let's have it about there and push the knob, well, we'll keep it out and we can see it. You can see that we have uh, a zoomed in view of that little peak on the, uh, on the waveform. And this scope has um, delta delayed time bases as well. So you can actually look at two independent features of the waveform. If I put delta T on, we can now move the other highlight. For example, compare the upper and lower uh, points of the triangle wave. You can move them around, you can actually see there's the upper one. And there's the lower one and for example you can make a precision measurement between them by let's line up the upper one with the center of the screen just like that and line up the lower one likewise just right in the middle and lo and behold uh, it's exactly 500 microseconds apart which is what I'd expect for a one kilohertz triangle wave uh, so that works uh, switch that off Go back to normal time base mode and you know time base settings all the way from 500 milliseconds 500 milliseconds per centimeter all the way through to nanoseconds per centimeter uh, we'll check this scope's bandwidth it's rated 350 megahertz to do that we need a fast rise time pulse uh, which I have on this signal generator here. We need to put the input onto 50 ohms terminated mode to get maximum bandwidth and accuracy. Turn up the sensitivity. Turn the intensity a bit. And now this is uh, a very, it's slightly faster, so we're going to turn up the 
phone base speed. Why is it not triggering? There we go. Uh, that's our fast rise pulse. Uh, we'll, if we crank this up to times 10 magnification, um, there we go. We can move this into a position where we can see it on the screen. Uh, I've set this up, I hope you can see that well. It's a bit dim. Uh, this is 500 picoseconds per centimetre horizontally. There's our 0% mark on the graticule, and up top is our 100% mark. If I put the cursors on now and measure the time between the 90%, oh, the 10% rise mark and the 90% one there, it's about right, about 0.95 nanoseconds. Uh, the usual formula, 350 divided by the rise time, gives you the bandwidth in megahertz. Uh, this is clearly exceeding 350 megahertz, so it's meeting its bandwidth spec, that's fine. Other channels just the same, the 550 ohm terminator works fine. Uh, so that's working well. Trigger modes all work. Uh, last of all, let's go for its sort of party trick. If I disconnect that signal generator and connect yet another one, which I have over here, you can show that even though it's a 350 megahertz scope, it's useful well beyond that. So here we have a um, let's measure let's slow it down a bit. Uh, so that here, let's measure that is 10 nanoseconds per cycle, which is whoop, press both of these at once, which is a bit tricky. Uh, that's a 100 megahertz signal, and I can increase the frequency of that. 200 megahertz, you see amplitude drops a little bit, as you'd expect. 300 megahertz, um, we will go 350 megahertz, which is the scope's minus 3 dB point. Just measure that from between peak to peak. There we go, 350 megahertz. But um, it carries on working well beyond that, actually. The amplitude drops off, obviously, but if I go up 450 megahertz, still working. 550 megahertz, 650 megahertz, amplitude's dropped off a bit, we'll bring it back up. 650, uh, 750, oh, we've lost it, but we can in increase the sensitivity and we've still got a trace, that's 750 megahertz. I'll measure it, there you go, 750. Uh, let's go further, 850, 950 megahertz. We've still got something, will it trigger, will it trigger on there? Uh, oh yeah, there we go, look, 950 megahertz, we still have a trace, it's still stable, it still triggers okay. Uh, let's, let's see if we can get to the magic gigahertz, 60, 70, 80, 90, that's one gigahertz, that's an actual one gigahertz signal, uh, it's as fast as the scope will run, and uh, there you go. It even displays it properly. Just about, we still have a stable trace at one gigahertz, which is pretty much three times the scope's rated bandwidth. Uh, they knew how to build them in the, those days. Uh, so there you go, that's the Tektronics 2465A scope uh, in good working order, and um, I hope you enjoyed watching. Thanks.